Welcome back to Audiobooks for Kids. I'm Ellie, and today we will be reading Owl Diaries, Eva in the Spotlight by Rebecca Elliott. Chapter 1. School Play Week, Sunday. Hi, Diary. It's Eva Wingdale again. I'm just flapping with excitement because this week is School Play Week. I can't wait to tell you about it, but first, here's a bit about me. I love Moonlight Flights, When Granny Owlberta Makes Me Giggle, Hanging With My Friends, New Pajamas, Acting, Singing, Wearing Costumes, The Word Clap. I do not love Foggy Nights, Anyone in My Family Feeling Sad, Falling Off Trees, Spilling stuff on my pajamas, forgetting my lines, holes in my favorite shoes, costume problems, the word stink. This is my flaptastic family. Dad, Humphrey, Mom, me, Baby Mo, Granny Owlberta, Grandpa Owlfred, this is my pet bat, Baxter. He's the best. I'm super happy that I'm an owl. We can look behind us without turning our bodies. We're awake all night long. We fly super fast. Our feathers are soft and good for cuddles. I live in a blue treehouse on Woodpine Avenue in Treetopolis. My BFF Lucy lives in the orange treehouse next door. My school is called Treetop Owlmentary. Here is a photo of my class. I'm so excited about school tomorrow. Miss Featherbottom is going to tell us which play our class is doing. I can't wait to find out. Chapter 2. Mirror, Mirror on the Wall. Monday. Tonight, Granny Alberta came over for breakfast. She looked a bit sad. You see, Grandpa Owlfred is away all week. He's building new tree houses on the other side of the forest. Are you okay, Granny? Oh, I'm fine, dear. I just miss Grandpa when he's away. I told Granny about the school play, and that cheered her up. I can't wait to see you on stage, Eva. Diary, I hope I get the starring role in the play. That would really make Granny smile. When I got to school, everyone was hooting about what our class play might be. Sleeping Hootie, Alice in Wingerland, Jack in the Beakstalk, The Wizard of Owl, we all held our breath as Miss Featherbottom started talking. As you all know, we will be performing a play this Friday. You will each have an acting role and a job to do on set. And the play will be Snowy White and the Seven Owlets. Yay! I love that story. Me too. Later tonight, I will put up your roles in the play. But right now, we need to write a list of everything we need to do before Friday. There's so much to do. This is the list we came up with. Write the script. Design the set. Build the set. Learn our lines. Practice the songs. Learn the dance moves. Make the costumes. Design the programs. I want to be the costume designer. Oh, that would be fun. I want to be snowy white. At the end of the night, Miss Featherbottom posted our parts in the play and our jobs off stage too. We crowded around to see the list. Cast list. Mrs. Featherbottom. Director. Sue. Snowy white and director's assistant. Carlos. Evil queen and head of props. Zach. Prince and scriptwriter. Kiara, Hootie Owlet and scriptwriter. Lucy, Hungry Owlet and costume designer. 
Macy, Shorty Owlet and Set Designer. Jacob, Flappy Owlet and Lighting Designer. Zara, Mary Owlet and Program Designer. Lily, Snoozy Owlet and Dance Choreographer. George, Gloomy Owlet and Set Builder. Haley, Huntsman and Set Builder. Eva, Magic Mirror and the Snowy White Understudy and Costume Designer. What does understudy mean? Hmm, I think it means doing your homework under a table. No, it doesn't, silly. It means if I'm sick, you get to do the role. So you will need to learn all my lines. But I'm never sick. Oh, don't worry, Eva. You're the magic mirror, and that is a great role. Plus, we get to design costumes together. Lucy was right. Even though I had been hoping to tell Granny Owlberta that I had this starring role, the play will be fun no matter what role I have. And costume design will be fun, too. After school, I went to visit Granny. She still looked a bit sad without Grandpa, but she perked up when she asked me about the play. So tell me everything. Did you get the starring role? Um... I didn't want to let Granny down, and I am the understudy for the starring role, so it wasn't exactly a lie when I said... Yes, I did. I'm going to be snowy white. Eva, that's super! Oh, dear diary, I can hardly sleep. What am I going to do when Granny comes to see me star in the play? She won't even see me on stage because I'm just the voice of a mirror. All I'd wanted to do was cheer Granny up, but this was not my best idea. Chapter 3. Meanie McMeanerson Tuesday. Tonight we started work on the play. Carlos made props. Zach and Kiera wrote the script. Zara designed the program. Lily planned our dance moves. Macy designed the set. George and Haley started building the set. Jacob set up the stage lighting. Work faster, no breaks! And Sue made sure we were all doing our jobs. Actually, Sue was being a bit of a meanie McMeanerson. Although I was still worried about what I had told Granny, Lucy and I had fun making costumes together. I'm excited to be an owlet. Are you looking forward to being the magic mirror, Eva? I am. I guess I just still sort of wish I was snowy white. Just at that moment, Sue flew past and heard what we were saying. Why does she always do that at the wrong time? Miss Featherbottom had to choose the best person for the part, and that happened to be me. Right, not you. Yep. I know Sue doesn't mean to be mean, but that did seem like a pretty mean thing to say. And it made me feel worse about what I had said to Granny Alberta because Sue is right. She is much better at speaking in public than I am. She is the better owl for the job. At bedtime, I was learning all the magic mirror and snowy white lines when Mom came in. I told her everything. I didn't get the starring role. I'm just the mirror, but I told Granny I was snowy white. I lied to cheer her up, and now I feel so bad about it. Oh, darling, you might have done the wrong thing, but you did it for the right reasons. That being said, you do need to tell Granny the truth before Friday. I'll tell Granny after school tomorrow. Don't worry. I'm sure she'll understand, and you're going to shine as the mirror. Chatting with Mom always makes me feel better, and I know she's right. Granny won't mind that I'm not the star, but I'm still not looking forward to telling her. Chapter 4. My Biggest Fan. Wednesday. I still felt nervous about talking with Granny after school, but rehearsing for the play was so much feather-flapping fun. When we practiced singing and dancing, everyone kept tripping over one another. We were laughing so hard, some feathers fell out. Don't worry, everyone. There's plenty of time to get things right before Friday. 
Carlos tried on the outfit Lucy and I had made for him. We'd sewn the sleeves in the wrong place. He looked so funny. How do I look? Well, it's lucky the evil queen is not supposed to be the fairest of them all. Then Mrs. Featherbottom reminded us that tomorrow would be our dress rehearsal. Get a good day's sleep today. Tomorrow is our official practice run before the big night. After school, I flew to Granny's house. I was so nervous about telling her the truth. Granny, I have to tell you something. I'm sorry, but... Yes, dear. I'm not going to be snowy white in the play. I'm just understudy. I'm really going to be a mirror. Granny looked so sad. I felt owlful. I don't mind if you're the star or not, you silly billy. I'm just sad you didn't already know. Know what? That I'd be super proud of you even if you were just playing the poisoned apple. I'm your biggest fan, Eva. She tickled me and we both started laughing. Thanks, Granny. I'd only told you I was snowy white because I wanted to cheer you up while Grandpa is away. Oh, I'm fine. It's just a shame Grandpa will miss your show. He won't be home until Saturday. When I got home, Lucy came over to finish making costumes. I tried on the snowy white costume so Lucy could put the finishing touches on it. This costume is so cool. Great work, Lucy. Thank you. You look flapperific in it. It's too bad you won't get to be snowy white when you've learned the lines and everything. That's okay. We'll all have fun up on stage, right? Right. Only two days until the actual show. The truth is, Diary, while I am still a tiny little bit sad, I won't get to be snowy white. I'm going to be a flaptastic magic mirror. That is, as long as I get all my lines right and remember all the dance moves. Eek! Chapter 5. Drama Disaster. Thursday. Our dress rehearsal started off great to me. Everyone was in their costumes, and the stage set looked owlsome. I'm the evil queen. Where's my magic mirror? Make sure the spotlight is on me most of the time. Then it all started to go very, very wrong. Parts of the set kept falling down. Mirror, mirror on the, um... Floor? Some costumes didn't fit quite right. I can't move my wings. I think my hat's a bit too big. The stage lights kept flashing so we couldn't see well and kept bumping into one another. Also, everyone kept forgetting their lines, especially Sue. Whenever it was her turn to speak, she just stood there, going red in the cheeks, until I told her what to say. The dress rehearsal was a disaster. Now we were all super worried about tomorrow. Well, class, just remember that tomorrow's performance can't possibly go as badly as tonight's. But please, practice, practice, practice. You all need to work much harder! As we worked more on the play, Mrs. Featherbottom put her wing around Sue. Sue, I think maybe you could spend some more time working on your lines and a bit less time worrying about what everyone else is doing. Everyone practiced their lines, but I noticed Sue sitting on her own looking down in the dumps. What's wrong, Sue? Didn't you like your costume? You looked great in it. I knew I did, but when the lights came on, I felt so nervous that I kept forgetting my lines. What if I forget them on stage tomorrow? I felt bad for Sue. I think maybe she spent the week so focused on everyone else that she didn't think about her starring role. Now she's realized she's super nervous about it. As your understudy, I've learned all your lines too, so maybe I could help you practice? Well, I'm sure I could learn them on my own, but yes, that would actually be great. Thanks, Eva. After school, 
Sue and I flew to her treehouse. We went through the snowy white lines together. I was a bit worried she might be mean and shouty, but we actually had fun. Oh, how I love my new friends, the seven owlets. Snoozy, hooty, gloomy, um, yes, keep going. Dumpy, cheesy, stinky, and steep? Almost. Ha 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 ha. I'm glad I helped Sue. Now I can't wait for tomorrow. And even if the play is a disaster, I know we will all have fun. And I'm excited Granny will be there. Chapter 6 The Show Must Go On Friday It's the night of the show. We put on our costumes while our families took their seats. It feels like butterflies are doing somersaults in my tummy. Me too. And me. You worked hard this week. Now go out there and have fun. Yay! Then Haley saw that Lily looked very scared. What's the matter, Lily? My whole family is here. I just don't want to mess up and let them down. I know how you feel. My granny has been feeling down, and I really want to do a good job to make her smile. Come on, Lily. I'll help you with your costume. We'll all be great. I just know we will. It was showtime at last. Everything was going great. Well, almost everything. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the, um, most naked of them all? Ha 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 ha. The evil queen's dress came off. But Carlos loved that it made the audience laugh. The play quickly got back on track. But then halfway through, disaster! Sue tripped over the curtain and hurt her leg. I can't go back on, Eva. You'll have to take my place. But, but, I can't. I'm not ready to actually be snowy white. You are ready for this. You can do it, Eva. I was nervous, but also excited. I knew the show had to go on. So with shaky wings, I put on the costume and became Snowy White. I flew out on stage. With the spotlight on me, the audience was very dark. But I could just make out my family. When I saw their proud faces, I knew I could do this. It was you who poisoned me, evil queen. Yay! Go, Eva! When the play finished, the audience stood up and clapped. I felt owl-amazing. Then we had a group hug backstage. Get back out there for one last bow. Back on stage, Haley gave Miss Featherbottom flowers. These are from all of us. Thank you for helping us do this. Oh, thank you! Audience, I am so proud of the hard work your little owls put into this fantastic play. Let's give them one last cheer. Everyone hooted loudly as Sue and I walked to the front of the stage for our final bow. I noticed her leg was better. Had Sue lied about her leg to get off stage earlier? Was it because she was nervous? Or had she forgotten her lines again? Backstage, I asked Sue about her leg. Sue, your leg is okay. Oh yes, I, well, actually, I didn't hurt it. I just thought you should do the second half of the play after you learned the lines so well and help me with mine. I couldn't believe Sue had done such a kind thing for me. Thank you, Sue. That was super lovely of you. Well, I am very lovely. Then Mom found me backstage. I'm so proud of you. And it made Granny so happy to see you on stage. And not just Granny. Look. I looked over and guess who I saw? Grandpa Alfred. Grandpa, I can't believe you're here. I came home early just to see your play. I arrived halfway through and stood at the back, 
but I saw your whole performance as Snowy White. Thank you for coming. Well, I am your number one fan. Hang on a minute. I thought I was. My family all hugged me and said how great the play was. Chapter 7. Eva the Superstar. Saturday. I'm so tired, diary. We had an after-show party where we ate toffee apples and danced the day away. Being a superstar is hard work, diary. But it's really so much fun when you've got an owl-amazing friends and family around. See you next time! Hope you guys enjoyed the story today. Be sure to like and subscribe.